John Stewart was on uh, was on was on the Colbert Report. Oh no, it's not the Colbert. It's late. No, what? Uh, no, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. We're gonna call it the Colbert Report. It's not because... the Colbert Report, though. No, listen, the only time I liked him was when he was on the Colbert Report. So that's what we're gonna do. He was on the Colbert Report. It's interesting. Talking to his buddy. It's interesting. He changed his gimmick as soon as he got off the Colbert Report because he was this hardcore conservative. And then once he got on the light show, he kind of dropped the uh, over the top conservative and he's sort of more of a more of a regular guy on this show. But sure. uh, but yes. So continue on with your story about my our friend John Stewart. Well, as I've said, uh, Colbert is a Republican right leaning conservative and he is in real life. Uh, John Stewart is a left-leaning uh, liberal, but probably the most famous liberal comedian out there. Uh, they have can maintain a relationship sort of like you and I, actually, now that I think about it. I didn't really realize that before this, but, uh, you know, John Stewart comes on his show and uh, has some things to say in support of Donald Trump's theory that this COVID-19 virus was created in a lab in Wuhan. Science has in many ways helped ease uh, the suffering of this pandemic, uh, which was more than likely caused by science. <laughs> so. The entire time that uh, John Stewart is saying this, Colbert is trying to change the subject, get things back on, uh, on the on the rails and uh, kind of lost control of it while uh, John Stewart expressed these controversial opinions. Hey, listen to this. So a few years back- You know we stopped filming a lot. I understand that. Ago. When, when Donald Trump was in office, anyone that said, you know, maybe it did come from that, uh, that Wuhan lab was, was called crazy, conspiracy theorist. Now that he's out, all of a sudden they're relaxing on that. And suddenly it's, it's not such a conspiracy. And wh why do you think that is? Because they, it doesn't it fit their narrative. Mm -hmm. That's think, exactly. But you think it's if you give Donald Trump credit for for something, it, it, it validates all of him or something. I no, don't no, 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 not all. Now this is where it's hard, right? Because like I've, we we've talked about this before, and, and we're, we're, you and I are pretty good because I'll yell loud enough that you'll hear me. Mm -hmm. But like you open your mind to one thing, and you allow yourself to be, oh, maybe it did come from that. Okay, mm -hmm. so Trump was right on that. Now, if you have a bit of a brain and you're interested in a conversation, if you opened it up to something else, you could be like, holy fuck, maybe he was right about this and maybe he was right about that. And maybe he was... I, it's funny because I have the exact opposite stances. Oh, you do? Go ahead. And, and I don't want to insult anybody. I know you're a, a Trump fan and, you know, there's Trump fans, but I don't personally and... You know, I don't think Trump's a very smart guy. I really don't. I think he's a bit of a runs off his mouth and doesn't always know what he's talking about and whatever. So with that, in that context, a lot of people dismiss everything that he says. So when he says something like this, it's automatically, oh, that guy's an idiot, yada, yada, yada. But a broken clock is right twice a day. And perhaps- So he's right about two things then, what you're saying well, in this whole I'm not presidency. Saying, I'm not saying he's right about two things, but- Trump isn't, Trump isn't an idiot. The problem with Trump is A, he's a boomer. Like you said, okay, boomer. He's a boomer. He, does, he, he doesn't have a fucking filter on him. His intelligence isn't in medicine. His intelligence is in business. Okay. I still That's, don't think he's a very smart guy. I don't think, even in business, I don't think he's a smart guy, but uh, how whatever. How many billions have you made? How many billions has he lost? Yes, that's the American setup, man. You want to talk about business now? I go all you day. Let's, no. let's stay on this Wuhan thing. But no, so. no, I want to. I want to. So, like, and John John Stewart stated some serious like facts. Mm -hmm. But well, I, 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 I sir, go, ahead. go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, his main fact is it's called the novel respiratory coronavirus overtaking Wuhan, China. What do we do? Oh, you know who we could ask the. Wuhan novel respiratory coronavirus lab. The disease is the same name as the lab. And simply suggesting that the novel coronavirus that started in Wuhan could have come from that lab is considered insanity, doesn't really make sense. I work at the coronavirus lab in Wuhan. Oh, because there's a coronavirus loose in Wuhan. How did that happen? Maybe a bat. And the reason it's considered insanity is because Trump was one of the people that uh, that preached this.
But if you take that guy off the table and you realize that there are intelligent people who are also saying this, that it's not just Donald Trump. There are, are people who have, uh, you know, masters in biology or whatever, these people who understand uh, doctors that understand things that are saying that, uh, uh, what is his name? Uh, Weinstein. Um, uh, Harvey? Is, no, not Harvey Weinstein, but... Um, the chances that it came from the lab look to me to be about 90%. There's adaptation to the laboratory environment that people who work in labs are un unaware of. And so one of the questions I have is, this virus is highly transmissible, unless you're outdoors. Then it seems almost not transmissible. That's very conspicuous. I mean, for one thing, bats live outdoors, right? Mm. Um, so is it possible that this virus has adapted to the laboratory environment, an indoor environment, and that it has forgotten how to get transmitted outdoors? To, to think it was made from a lab makes perfect sense because did we seriously just watch it one in a billion year cycle of, uh, of, of something just form and, and a biology just magically appear in front of us? Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. other, things, other things that they're, they're making um, notice of is that uh, this virus performs in ways that most viruses don't, but as it, um, as it mutates, it's starting to perform a little bit more like a traditional virus. So it's almost as if it was developed in an environment that didn't have anything to do with evolution. And now that it's out and it's mutating, it's mutating in a way that is natural. So do we, how do we, so what, so what happens if we find out that it was, it was in a lab? Uh, if we find out that it was in a lab, then what do we we're do? going to have to, I would say, I'm War? not, I'm not there. No, I don't know about that, but we would have to implement international standards for what you can and cannot do when experimenting on a virus. These would have to, international standards for that sort of thing would be. I just say we knew China. Fuck them. <laughs> I think that's a bit excessive, but I, that's I a bit excessive. Dude, they could have killed, they, they might've killed grandma. Okay. But a mistake was made. It lived potentially. We don't know. But if a mistake was made, let's acknowledge that. Let's adjust because next time it may not be China. So if we just nuke China, that doesn't really address the issue. It could happen in yeah, some but the other next country. time somebody the next time somebody thinks about doing that, they're gonna go, holy fuck, I'm gonna get wiped off the face of the earth. <laughs> I think that um, I think that it would be more productive to just create an international standard to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And uh, you know, that's probably going to be more of a policing of it because then when somebody breaks that international standard, then we can uh, enforce it. We can, you know, I don't yep. want to say drop a nuke, but we can go in and enforce that and police it a little bit better. And that's going to help us to police it in the future, in my opinion. Uh, I'm glad, hey man, I'm glad you're here because you know what? You just stopped me from nuking China. So I mean, <laughs> you go be the UN somewhere else, I'll sit around with a couple of codes and we'll nuke them.